folks, welcome back to Dragonfly Project. So I managed to get my hands on some Oregon RD chain, which is their ripping chain. So cutting like this instead of a regular cross cut. I also bought a couple of the EXL Oregon chain to try them out. It's been very tough actually to try and find some chain in stock. I guess with the uh, short supplies and the uh, distribution lines and everything still not back to what it used to be. Bars and chains are, are a little scarce right now. So if I like them, I'll probably end up buying a roll and making my own chains in the future. So today I'm gonna try my hand at freehand milling. I don't have the budget right now to buy a Alaskan sawmill. Uh, I would love to get a, a portable uh, sawmill, but those are quite pricey. So I have a lot of logs and no extra help today. So I can't really start in the woods yet to clear off that gigantic storm damage. So I'll try my hand at some milling, see how it goes and see how this chain performs. Uh, the profile of the chain is very different than your regular um, square chisel. It also has different instructions when sharpening it. Uh, the angle is slightly different because again, you're not cross cutting, you're ripping. So come along, let's see what we can do and hopefully I don't mess up too bad. Now let's try to make a cant out of this log. Um, I do have some plans to maybe build a bridge for the pond access because in the springtime, because of the water level rising and it's crossing a creek that's seasonal, there's no way for me to get the tractor back there when it's so wet. So maybe this will be the foundation, foundation for that bridge. So a cant is just basically a square out of a log. Let's see how square I can get it. The only downside is the bigger chips uh, kind of clog this fairly easily. Because the whole bar is buried for large amounts of time, I've also increased uh, the oiler so it oils more. So there's less chance of overheating. And I'm also giving the saw a break in between cuts to give it a chance to cool down a bit. Because a 72cc saw with a 28 inch bar full house, not skip, is uh, probably as big as you wanna go. Because when you're milling, bigger is always better. But the budget does not allow for it right now. And to be honest, I would probably get a portable sawmill before I get a bigger chainsaw just for milling. So 
I made myself a little line. It's not perfectly straight, but at least it's giving me an idea of where I want to go because as I'm backing up, it's hard sometimes to tell how straight you are. So at least I have a guide to follow. I'm not cutting it in line. see where I had my line here that's not bad at all actually can probably get a true 8 by 8 out of it So now we have three square sides, square, just going to flip it, get the top off, and we have our tent. It's a lot lighter than last time. Yeah, I gave or take eight. Eight inches. Don't want to run out of oil doing this, that's for sure. Every time I pour oil and I don't spill it everywhere, I consider that a major win. Yes, 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 yes. would say I did a thing I made a cat it's so crooked it's so crooked and I love it because I did it I just took a quick peek at Home Depot Canada and a 6x6x8, six by six by this is a true 8x8x8, eight by eight by eight. the 6x6x8 six by six by is $45, so this 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight cost me only uh, $1,200 for the chainsaw, some gas, some oil, $60 for the chain, and about $100 for the bar, so kind of similar. The good thing is from now on, the price drops for every board I mill, but I just find it funny. It will be cost effective one day. But right now it's $45 versus probably around $1,400. But I had way more fun doing it than driving all the way to Home Depot to pick it up.
Well, folks, thank you so much for watching. Oh, she's dirty. This was a uh, white pine. I think it was around 17 inches in diameter. That's uh, probably the average size of the big pines we have. There's some bigger ones that fell, but obviously we'll decide at that time if we just keep them for the portable sawmill that eventually will arrive. The thing is, I already have the chainsaw. The RD chain was a bit more expensive. It was about $50, maybe a bit more actually. Um, versus the EXL, which is your regular cross-cutting saw uh, chain. But, proof of concept, I am not good at it yet, freehanding it. It's not perfect, but if I want to use it as supports, I'd use it like this. I'll just cut it to the proper height, probably make two or three pieces out of this. So for that purpose, and it's fine, uh, big, sturdy, this thing can hold up a lot of weight. It is softwood, so it's not a hardwood, so it's a little easier on the chainsaw. And I think an Alaskan sawmill for, this is a 28 inch bar, so I'd probably go with a 32 inch um, Alaskan sawmill setup. I think it's around six, $700 for the whole setup, which is quite pricey. You can't get into a sawmill that's the smallest one and not portable for around $35,000, $4,000. $3,500 to $4,000. Um, the setup I eventually want to use is going to be, uh, I'm looking at the Woodland Mills HM130 Max, and I would put it on a trailer, and I would want the 16-foot uh, bed. So that's around the $8,000 mark, plus shipping, plus taxes, because I do want to uh, share it with my father-in-law so we can ferret uh, from property to property, because he has a lot of maple trees on his property that he wants to use the sawmill for. But in the meantime, I made something. It's amazing. I also have an inch and a half, give or take, slab of live edge wood. I'm not sure what I'll do with it yet. I'll just put it somewhere so it can dry. It'll probably warp because I'm not going to put anything specific on it. It's kind of crooked. But I just want to see how it behaves. Eventually, I do want to mill my own wood and build a solar kiln to dry my wood, the nicer wood, and then eventually go from there. Uh, I do have some projects. Like I said, I might build a bridge to access uh, just because I have so much free wood. A culvert's kind of pricey and I'd have to backfill with a lot of dirt. I do have some cement I could use, but I'd still need some topsoil to go on top of it, which I don't have a ton of right now. And it would cost us money versus the wood, which would be free. I just have to mill it, basically. Saw uh, perform beautifully. Every time I use it, I am more and more in love with it. And practice will make perfect. I do have a little setup now. I don't know how the Aspens will mill, but that will have to wait for another day. Uh, I've just run out of time for today, but this is my eight by eight white pine kit. And as you can see, it's not the nicest. It's not perfectly straight, but I did, I did it and it's mine and I'm very proud of it. Wonder if I can sleep with it tonight quite comfy actually all right thank you so much for watching guys like subscribe and comment and i'll see you guys in the next video take care